So good morning, everyone. And first, I'd like to thank the Google Earth Outreach and everyone involved in helping us to um, develop this, uh, this software that has many connections with the Google tools. So I work on Collect Earth in, with the FAO. And we're going to be talking about like, some challenges and opportunities for Collect Earth and that it's a multi-purpose visual interpretation tool. And it's basically how to collect data from all the sources available for us. So Collect Earth that I'll be talking about, it's actually one software, one tool, inside of a group of tools called the Open Forest Suite. And we have some projects, some, some, some tools, some resources, very similar to the ODK. So we have a mobile collector where you can collect data in the field. We also have um, a collect designer where you can design your survey, very similar to the ODK Builder. And, but I'll be talking about Collect Earth. So this full project, it's uh, funded. Our donor is the International Climate uh, Initiative, IDK. And it's supported by the FAO, so it's hosted inside of FAO. And it's a free and open source software, so everyone can contribute and use it. Um, currently, our biggest project is a national forest monitoring and inventory system. So we build capacity for UN RED, so the countries can uh, be in compliance with many different agreements that they have or joint projects that they might have interested in. And we have many partners using Collect Earth nowadays. One of them is uh, the Department of Interior of the US. We also have US Geological Survey, US uh, Forest Survey, and many different others. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about like, the Collect Earth system itself, what is Collect Earth, and how it works. So it's mainly a tool that enables data collection. So, and it's built on top of Google Earth. So we're thinking about uh, visual interpretation. So what it does, it's a point sampling design. So the approach, you, you have a grid, and we plot this grid on top of Google Earth. And then you have a pop-up card where you can collect information on it. I'm going to show how it looks like. Oh, and at the same time, we have a geosynchronization with other tools as well. In this case, like Google Earth Engine, the App AI Playground, or the Code Editor, and also Bing Maps as another source of uh, high-resolution imagery. Mm. It's ideal, actually, for us. Our main use is for land use and land use change, and also deforestation. And we also have help countries to do uh, their forest, uh, national forest inventories. So we try to help them out. So we have done the full country assessment of Mongolia, for example, Kyrgyzstan, Tunisia, Bhutan, and there are other countries we're working with. So how is it organized? So we have Collect Earth. First, you need a sampling design and your survey. So we get the sampling design. Currently, we're using QGIS to create the sampling design. And then a survey you can create using the Collect Survey design, which is also free. And you put them on top of Google Earth. And we also bring Google Earth Engine for you as a source of satellite imagery. So you have access to all the products that Google makes available through uh, Google Earth Engine. And also you have Bing Maps. So with that information, you collected your data in the cards that you created using Collect Survey. And you can export for Fusion Table, where you can process the, you can analyze the fusion tables on Google Earth Engine. You can export to the CSV and then use it in another software. And all this data is stored in a database. It can be a single user database or a multiple user database. And lately, you can analyze this data directly on Cycle, which is an analysis tool. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I'm going to show you how it looks like. So this software itself looks like this. So you have in your left panel your grid. So all those like green tick marks are plots that I already used. I already collected all the information. And this is your card that you designed. It's very flexible. You can change any kind of information you want to collect from that imagery. And this was customized for a dry lens assessment. And when you click in the plot, there's like the place mark that looks different. You can change the size and the structure of the plot. You have three different sources, the resources to help you to do the analysis of this plot. One is the code editor, where we have a predefined set of uh, analysis for you, like some graphs in DVI, I'm going to talk about it. The window with the Earth Engine, where you can browse any type of resource that they have, and also the Bing Maps, another source of imagery. So this is like, it all opens together with one click when you you start assessing the plot. Once you're done, that plot turns green, and then you move to the next one. 
So, and this is something that was not possible before. If you think about the historical imagery on Google Earth, you cannot really find every year to see the correct uh, year of land use change, and here, or land cover change. And here you have a very good example. You have 2009. This is the highlight of our plot. So it brings the place mark into Google Earth Engine as well. And you can see 2009, the area was clear here, grassland. You can already see that they cleared the area to, implement, to establish the, the crop plots. And here, one year later, with this composite, the greenest pixel, you can already see like, the correct year of change. This was not possible before. And when we're talking about developing countries and their access to the technology, it's very difficult for them to download this, all this information, process it, and then have this uh, type of final product that's like, very easy through Google Earth Engine. And we also bring the code editor, all this code we wrote, not me, I'm not a programmer. And you can see in the NDVI graph here, the exact year of transition from the grassland, low production, like very low vegetation index, this NDVI, and then it spikes and starts the seasonality of the, of the crop when it arrives in 2010. So it's very similar. So the user has two, like several different resources to analyze this data and to, um, to tell like what type of like land use changes this is this like a seasonality or not? So once you collect all this information, you have the option to run Cycle directly from Collect Earth, and this is a tool for data analysis, and it brings all the attributes that you have in your survey into this very easy interface. It's a, basically a drag, drag and drop, so you can pull like in this case I. It's a drylands assessment, so it says like, I want to see land use per aridity zone. And then it brings these colorful and beautiful graphs for, for you to export many different formats. And the best thing is it's free. And so there are many opportunities um, that we are exploring. The first thing, it's uh, the grid creation. And we're doing like with the EPA, with the playground now, we are using this activity data for uh, agriculture and land use greenhouses inventories, so like many new opportunities, large scale assessments. If you're organized enough, you can assess like 200,000 plots. There are some challenges, like the long-term availability of the platform. We're afraid they're gonna take this out of us, like the map engine. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the processing time where we're dealing with this large amount of data. We're sometimes greedy. We see like, oh, we can do everything. So I wrote a code and I tried to run and it doesn't run. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much. Sorry, it took too long. I wasn't sure whether this works when you're offline or not, when you're actually collecting the data on the plot. It needs to be online the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Because every plot you move to the next one, Google Earth like, loads that, the imagery for that, for that part. You need to be online. Thanks very much. Thank you.